Welcome to The Simple Truth. Uh, today we're going to go on a topical uh, discussion. Uh, I hope you got pencil and paper. You can write down the scriptures as we talk about them and do your own study and also to increase on that. I, I understand I'm not going to be able to do... Uh, the whole thing uh, that can be brought out in, in the one I'm talking about today. But we've talked about salvation. We've talked about faith. We talk about knowledge of the Lord. We talk about uh, being obedient. We talk about um, being holy and, and righteous. And, and all those things that we talk about are good things to talk about. And they're things that we need to understand. But there's an aspect that we we include in that, but we don't always really teach on it. And today, that's why I've named this particular program, Be Willing. It's just very simple. And I want to show you through the scripture. We're going to go to different places today. And I want to show you in the scripture what being willing uh, means to us and how much we need to be uh, just simply willing to do what God has called us to do and to do what we are being led to do at times. Uh, so go to the Old Testament in uh, Exodus chapter 25, and this is where the Lord is telling Moses to to gather things uh, to build the tabernacle in the wilderness, uh, that mobile uh, temple that he first designed for Israel as they moved through the land before they came to the promised land that God had promised them. So now, verse 1 of chapter 25. <coughs> then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, that they bring me an offering from everyone who gives it willingly with his heart. You shall take my offering. <coughs> and then the rest of that chapter, he goes on and tells the things that he once brought. But look at it. The Lord wants an offering. And this is a sacrificial offering. Uh, this is, you know, to give from the heart, uh, to be willing to give. It is not a mandatory you give. It is from your heart, willingly give. And we don't always say how important that is to our relationship with God. And how important it is that when we give, and I realize most time we're talking about money these days, but I want you to know it's more than money. It is the offering or sacrifice of your time, of your will, uh, sometimes your money, but your talents are included in that. And just be willing to do. Many times we may be willing, but we don't have. And we're going to be talking about that as we go too. But this is an offering to the Lord. And every time that we are willing to offer something, whether it's our time, whether it's our money, whether it's our talent, when we are willingly giving that offering to the Lord, He will take it and multiply it to those that it has been given to. Uh, uh, verse 1 and 2 here, he tells about that offering. Uh, it is a uh, heave offering, a wave offering um, to be given uh, out of the heart. Uh, I want you to go to um, verse 21 in this same chapter. Uh, 21 it starts with, you shall put the mercy seat on top of the ark, and the ark, uh, you shall put the testimony that I give you, and there I will meet with you, and I will speak with you from above the mercy seat. From between the two cherubs, which are the on the ark of the, of the testimony, about everything which I will give you, in commandment to the children of Israel. Now, just, just take a look at these two verses. First of all, he, he's telling us about how he wants the Ark of the Testimony built. Uh, this wooden box that is uh, acacia wood, which is a real hard, uh, durable, lasting wood, and overlaid with gold. And then he's talking about the mercy seat that sits on top of this box with the two cherubims that are on each side of it. Uh, 
with their wings spread out. Um, I find it interesting that today, even in Israel, many of them do not know whether it is they're sitting at a corner and their their wings are going, you know, at at an angle, or whether they're actually going out in front of them and and touching, or not quite touching, but to in front, over covering the whole mercy seat. Uh, we understand today that the mercy seat is actually Jesus Christ. It is through His mercy that you and I can be saved. Uh, it is through His mercy, and God has used Him uh, uh, to to be uh, our salv- salvation, our Savior, uh, the one that we worship. And then in this verse it says, The testimony I will give you. I don't know about you, but there's times when I have a real problem with, with, with calling it my testimony. You know, at the beginning of, this, of these programs, many, you know, a couple years ago, um, I gave my testimony how the Lord saved me. And I find that it's not my testimony, it's His. And here he says, it is my testimony, what I have done in you, uh, through you, and for you, that is the testimony that the Lord has, and He has given it willingly to you and I. I find that amazing as I, as I study this out this week, that I will, there it is, that willingness of God to give us a testimony and to bring us through these things. Uh, verse 22, and it says, There I will meet with you, and I speak, and I will speak with you. Here he's made a a double promise, that he will meet with you and that he will speak to you. I want you to understand today in prayer, it is not a simple tell God everything you want and then walk away. It needs to be a time when you allow the Lord to speak to you, to listen for his voice, to have him meet with you. Nothing gets done unless there is a meeting and an agreement. And we need to know that I need to be willing to do that. You need to be willing to do that. But the Lord is willing to do that. And so there's a major willingness going on here that we both sides of this equation needs to be doing. Uh, He goes on and says, um, um, talking about the mercy seat. And I'll put my commandments in there. The commandments was put in. The Ten Commandments was put into uh, the Ark of the Covenant, the the uh, was covered by the mercy seat, with other articles that we may may or may not talk about, but uh, but they are there also. But he put his commandments in the Ark of the Covenant. Today, his commandments are written on the hearts of the believers. It is written there for us to understand, to cherish, to follow, to be obedient to, but it needs to be a willingness. Understand that you and I, even though we get saved, we still have a will of our own. We still have a will of saying, yes, I'm going to do this, or no, I won't. We still have that will, and it's always best to say, yes, Lord, I will follow you. Because you're never going alone. It's always his will to go with you and to help you and to do more than you ever thought could happen because of his willingness. Now, uh, let us uh, move on over to chapter 31 of Exodus. Um, and I apologize for the for the names of these gentlemen because I can't say them correctly. And uh, forgive me, okay? Um, love me anyway. I'm your brother. Uh, verse one of thirty one. And then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, "See, I have called by the name um, Belzadel, the son of Uriah, the son of Hur." Uh, of the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, understanding, in knowledge, and in all matters of works, to design the artistic works, 
to work gold, silver, and bronze, and then goes on to cutting jewels and the wood and everything. But it is the wisdom of the Lord. He has put on this particular man in this instant for building the tabernacle. Uh, he has given him uh, knowledge. He's given him wisdom. He's in, in all kinds of workmanship to do what is necessary to build the tabernacle in the wilderness. And he filled him with the Spirit. It's one of the times that we, we understand that it was a willingness of God to pour his Spirit out for a job that he had for this particular man. Uh, on down a little farther, um, and I'm, verse 6, uh, And I indeed I have appointed with him uh, Ahobah ben, uh, the son of Ashishmach, of the tribe of Dan, and I have put wisdom in the hearts of all the gifted artists, artisans, that they may make all that I have commanded you. And he's talking about the tabernacle in the wilderness. He's talking about uh, the designing and the uh, jewels uh, cutting and, and the gold, uh, putting it into place and, and the covering the, the wood. Uh, all that needed to be done. But this, and it was by his spirit that he put on these uh, people so that they could live and work what God has called them to do. I want you to know today he's doing the same thing. When we receive Christ as our Savior, we receive the Holy Spirit, and if we will continue to follow after him, he will help us to do things that need to be done, and he will give us the wisdom that we need for that time. You know, I am glad that I don't have to sit here and teach you about my wisdom because it would be a short program. But God's wisdom, working through me by His Spirit, I have an opportunity as He opens up the Word to me that I can share it with you. And I am grateful for that because it's a willingness of God to have us know more about Him. And to love him more. And to love the world in a way to draw them to him. Knowing the love of God. Okay. Uh, I want to move on over to 1 Chronicles. Chapter 28. And I believe I'm going to take a look at verse 21. Uh, Here are the divisions of the priest and the Levites. For all the service of the house of the Lord, every willing craftsman will be with you for all matters of workmanship, for every kind of service. Also the leaders and all the people will be completely at your command. So here he's saying, he's saying you know, Moses, or Solomon, this is, we've gone from Moses in the tabernacle in the wilderness to Solomon building the temple. And here he's saying, you know, I have put my spirit on the priests and the workers uh, of, of the craftsmen, every willing craftsman, those that are willing. See how important it is to be willing, that we are willing to do these things, that we are willing to use our talents that God has put into us to, to express his love and to express his joy in us and to be a part of us and we be a part of him. See, it's that willingness that is so important. Let's go to, uh, to the New Testament, uh, to, verse, uh, to 2 Corinthians. And we're starting in chapter 8. And uh, let's start with verse first. Moreover, brethren, we made it known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, that in the great tribulation, great trials of affliction, the abundance of your, their deep and poverty uh, abound in the riches of their liberty. For I bear witness that according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely giving. In other words, here's one church uh, that was seeing the need 
uh, of another group of people and they was sending money and supplies to them. They were willing to do that. Out of what they had, they were willing to give to help others. Uh, verse 4, it, imploring them that uh, much urgency that they would receive the gift in the fellowship of the ministering to the saints and not only as we had hope but they first gave themselves to the Lord and then to us by the will of God. See, God's will is in the midst of this. It's not only their willingness to give, but it's God's will to give. Uh, it's going both directions here. Uh, so we urged Titus that as he had begun, so he would also complete this grace that is in you as well. In other words, Titus, we want you to complete this gathering a free will giving offer, this offering that they were giving, to complete it uh, so that, uh, here, uh, verse 7, but as you abound in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all diligence, and in your love for us, uh, see that you abound in this grace also. And he's talking about uh, abound in the love of God, abound in the, the commandments that were given to you. Uh, Continue to be holy and lifted up and, and, and through that. Because, verse 9, uh, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that you, through his poverty, uh, may become rich. In other words, Jesus was, is God. He's always been God. But he set about his divinity... And became man. He was totally God, but he was totally man. And he put himself in a position where he was willing to allow someone else to be in charge. And that was the Father in heaven. Uh, to be in charge. He tells us in the Gospels, uh, what I see my Father doing, that's what I do. What I hear my Father saying, that's what I say. And he was willing to be put under that authority... So the, the will of God the Father could be done. And he was willing to do that, even the willingness to go to the cross. He was willing to set aside all the riches of heaven to become poor as you and I. So here he, he's showing us this is why that we give. Not because it is a commandment to give, but because of the generous, the loving Offering the sacrificial offering that we give, so um, that's what that's what he's trying to get across to us. Um, in chapter nine of the same book, it's the First Corinthians nine. I start with verse five. Therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort the brothers to go to you ahead of time and prepare your generous gift beforehand, which you also previously promised that is to be ready as a matter of generosity and not as a grudging obligation here he's telling us I sent ahead to let you know that it is time that this gift that you promised we didn't demand it of you you promised it now's the time to get it all gathered together the time is now to be giving it uh, and doing it with him in a matter of generosity, of wanting to, here, here again, be willing to give, not grudgingly. I don't know how to put this any other way, I'm sorry. But when you give, give it from your heart. As we talked about in uh, Exodus chapter 25, the willingness from the heart to give. If it's not, don't give it. I, I, that's going to rub some people, I understand. Don't give because you think yeah, it's a mandatory thing. Give from the heart. God will bless that because you are exhibiting a characteristic of a God. His willingness to send His Son to you and I for our salvation and... It was still, we had free will. 
Some was going to accept and some not. But he still did it out of willingness to sacrifice his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, so that I, you and I can have salvation. If you're doing it grudgingly, leave it in your pocket because it can't be blessed. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry if you, if you don't agree with me. That's okay. Uh, I'm not upset. But it's more better to give out of a loving heart with a willingness to give than, the, than to be grudging about it. To be, uh, oh, I don't know, I wish, wish I hadn't have done that. Uh, I don't want to do that anymore. That kind of attitude. That can't be blessed because it's not from the heart. And it's, it's worthless. It's just that. It's just whatever you gave. And that's all. There's nothing supernatural about it. There's nothing empowering about it. Uh, there's nothing that, that is blessed by it. It is simply a giving. Okay? Um, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Verse 6, but, but this I say, uh, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Uh, so let everyone of, uh, give as he proposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Uh, that cheerful there uh, is from the Greek word that we get our word hilarious from. Uh, we are to be happy about that. We need to be joyful about that. I'm, I'm, I remember the first time I went to full gospel, and, and it was finally that time in the program where we want to receive an offering. And people clapped and yelled and just got excited that here's an opportunity that we can give an offering. When's the last time that your church got excited when it was time to receive the offering? Has it been a while? Next time you start it, clap and, and scream, praise the Lord, and get excited about that. You have this opportunity to be a blessing. And God will bless that and he'll bless you. Uh, so... Uh, know those things uh, on the sideline there, and, and God bless you for doing it. Uh, so, uh, uh, continue in, in those things. Um, I want you to understand that it is, it is necessary to do those, to be a blessing to others. Um, I want to go back to chapter 8 um, and verse 12. Uh, for for if there is first a willing mind, what's first? A willing mind, a willing heart, a willing to give. It is accepted according to what one has, not according to what he does not have. Here's, here's, here's the thing that I want, to, want you to understand about this verse. You have to do with a willing mind. God will never ask you to give what you don't have. He will have you give and put it on your heart to give what he wants you to give. And give out of that, okay? I know there was a time in my life when I didn't have much money and yet the Lord prompted me to give a third of all the cash that I had away. And I was willing. Um, I did not understand what God was doing. But I found out that later that it was at the right time. It went to the right place. And it became a blessing to, to the one that, that it was given to. And in return, I received blessings from it also. But it all started by obeying God when he put it on my heart to give and me with my free will gave and you can do the same thing and it will happen with you the same way but give it out of what you have not according to what you don't have I cannot give you a million dollars because I don't have a million dollars and I see no way of getting a million dollars uh, in this uh, lifetime okay uh, 
Uh, and that's just an example. But we are to give according to what God calls us to give. Now I'm going to take you back to the second Peter chapter 3. Second Peter chapter 3. Real quick here. And verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. And as some count slackness, but in long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Understand, willingness started with God. His willingness to send Christ to the earth. His willingness to teach us his, his word, his willingness to show us what it means, his willingness to be long-suffering, to wait for you today. It's God's will for you to accept him. Is it your will? That's the big question. We know it's God's will because he doesn't want anyone to perish. He wants all to be a part of his kingdom. He desires all of us to be a part of his kingdom. But you and I have a free will. I've accepted that invitation. I have made that sacrificial offering of saying, Lord, not my life, yours. Live it through me. Today, if that's your heart, ask the Lord in your life. Say, just simply say, Lord, I want your life in me. And I want to be cleansed of all the unrighteousness that was in me so that I can be blameless and pure to enter your kingdom. Not because I've done anything, but because of your actions of what Jesus did on the cross, the blood shed, the life that was given, and then the resurrection. I want that for my life. I want to be yours so that I can have you. Teach me the word as I go through life and give you the praise for it. Today, be a willing giver. Be willing to do whatever God wants you to do and to give it with a willing heart. It's so important that you and I learn to be a willing giver. God bless you, and we'll see you next week. Speaking of the blood and the cross, I'd like to read a scripture out of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 9, verse number 15. You may want to listen closely to this one. And for this cause, he is a mediator of the New Testament, that by the means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first covenant, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal life. It's talking about the cross of Christ. Did you notice what it said there? In that verse it says that those in the old covenant were saved at the cross of Christ. Hebrews 10 says that the animal sacrifices could not take away sin. It's the only thing they knew in the Old Testament, but it was ratified at the cross of Christ for all men. You're more than just a friend. You're a wingman, a pick-me-up. But on the toughest days, when I'm not sure who to turn to, you might just be a lifeline. This program raises questions 